Hi, my name is Enfink Pham, and I am a sophomore in the College of Arts and Science, majoring in Anthropology and Human Biology, and minoring in Global Health. Today I'll be talking about Cannabis Sativa, which is an herb more commonly known as marijuana and found in the Cannabaceae family. In the last figure, I have a picture of both female and male plants. B represents the female plant, and A is the male plant. In the right figure, I have a picture of a cannabis leaf, which has a really recognizable structure. It usually has seven or five leaflets poking out of the center point. As I said before, cannabis sativa is in the cannabaceae family, which only contains cannabis and humulus plants. An example of the humulus plant is hops, which is the main ingredient found in beer. I'll be going over a botanical description of marijuana, a long history of its medicinal and non-medicinal uses, some of the chemistry of the plant, which attributes to its psychoactive properties, and some problems that concern research of cannabis sativa due to its Schedule I drug legal status in the USA. Cannabis sativa was first cultivated in Central Asia, but it's now cultivated in India, Europe, and the Americas. It's a really adaptable plant and can grow in altitudes up to 8,000 feet in poor soil and with little water, but usually it prefers direct sunlight, open ground, loamy soils, and it grows best in tropic and temperate areas. It's also mainly a dioecious plant, but monoecious plants also exist. The male plants are taller and grow in dense bunches. They produce the pollen, which is transferred over to the female plant. Their flowers are also a lot smaller than female plants and are usually shades of green, yellow, and purple. Even if wind hasn't been adequate enough to transfer the pollen from the male plant to the female plant, they can still grow and semillas, which means seedless in Spanish, are types of marijuana plants that are really popular among cultivators today because of the high amount of THC that is produced by the continually growing buds. The flowers are usually shorter than a male plant. In the left figure, which I have pictures of different parts of the female plant, including leaves and seeds and its habit. And in the right figure, I have a picture of the male cannabis sativa plant. Hairs grow on both of these plants, and the female hairs usually produce an amber-colored resin. Here I have a distribution map of where marijuana is grown in the U.S., and as you can see, it's grown in most U.S. states today and many Canadian provinces as well. And in the last figure, I have a picture of where marijuana is speculated to have first been cultivated and where it's spread around the world today. Marijuana has had a lot of medicinal and non-medicinal uses. In this picture, I have a picture of a hemp hut. And hemp was probably the first product that was made out of cannabis sativa. Its domestication started in China around 4500 BP, and it's tall and grows in warm climates. Hemp is usually made from the stalks of cannabis sativa plants. They were used as fabrics because they're extremely strong. It was an important American crop in the early days, but it decreased because of its legal status. And besides making fabric, it can also be used to make rope, building material, paper, and other uses. And today most ropes are made of nylon and cotton, but hemp ropes still exist. Hemp seed oil is one of the many uses of the seeds of the plant. The seeds are really nutritious and can be used as food and bait as well. Hemp seed oil is usually found as an alternative emollient to almond, coconut, and olive oil in cosmetics, but the oil can also be extracted for other uses. The most popular use of marijuana is for its psychoactive properties and the herb can be made from dried flowers and leaves. The resin can be created by separating hairs and hashish oil requires a really long extraction process but it's the most potent. It's been used for recreational, medicinal, and spiritual uses. One of the first accounts of its medicinal use was by the Emperor Shang Nang in his book Pin Sao Xing and he listed it as an anti-inflammatory and painkiller. He also prescribed his patients a hemp elixir for gout and malaria. It was also listed in the Atharvaveda as a treatment for asthma, congestion, fevers, and inflammation. The Hashish Club used marijuana recreationally. They were a group of French writers 
including Baudelaire, who used to smoke the plant for in order to stimulate their creativity. In India, a lot of the rural populations rely on traditional herbal medicine, which includes cannabis sativa. They use an oral treatment or tea version. One group has been known to use it for dysentery and diarrhea in cattle and goat, while another used it for treating coughs. They also use it for recreational purposes in three different forms. Bang is made from dried leaves, which is usually mixed into a drink, and shara is, is hashish, and ganja is the flowering pops and can be smoked. Hindu castes also use cannabis sativa in their ritual ceremonies and festivals. In, the, in Nepal, cannabis sativa is used for ritual, social, and medicinal purposes. The Ayurvedic system uses powder and decoctions that are made from dissolving in hot and cold water or milk, honey, and oil. They have used it to mix with 15 other ingredients to treat diarrhea, to put children to sleep, and as a pain relief. In the late 18th century, Indian indentured servants came to Jamaica and introduced cannabis sativa to the working class. It's um, popular among the middle class today as well, who mainly focus on the psychoactive reactions. And children in Jamaica actually start smoking marijuana around age of eight. Indian indentured servants also introduced the ganja complex which is a set of cultural beliefs and methods and preparation around marijuana. And one religious group in Jamaica known as the Rastafarians consider marijuana a biblical weed. They advocate a back to Africa mo movement and worship the former emperor of Ethiopia, Haile Selassie. And they also smoke it during their religious ceremonies. There are currently 421 known compounds found in cannabis sativa and it is considered a psychoactive psych psychotomimetic drug because it mimics psychotic states. While most hallucinogens have alkaloids occurring as their most active compound, marijuana contains cannabinoids, which is unique to the plant and most concentrated in female tops. The most abundant cannabinoid found in cannabis sativa is tetrahydrocannabinol, other compounds include cannabidiol, CBD, and cannabinol, CBN. And most research has focused on THC, but it's believed that interactions between the compounds can enhance or decrease the psychotopometric effects. Here I'd like to talk about the variation in cannabis plants. In the picture on the top, I have the habit of Cannabis sativa, cannabis indica, and cannabis bruteralis plants. Cannabis indica and cannabis bruteralis are two different species that have been speculated to be separate from cannabis sativa. In the bottom picture, I have a picture of the cannabis sativa leaf on the left and the cannabis indica leaf on the right. As you can see, cannabis indica leaves tend to be wider and shorter than cannabis sativa leaves. Cannabis indica is speculated to have a CBD and THC ratio that is much higher than cannabis sativa. Typically, there are three types of cannabis plants. The drug type has high amounts of THC and no CBD. The intermediate type has moderately high concentrations of both, while the hemp type has low concentrations of both. Cannabinoids act on specific re receptor sites that are known collectively as the endocannabinoid system. Two of these receptors have been cloned. The CB1 receptors occur in neuronal cells and are involved with memory and motor control, while the CB2 receptors are found in non-neuronal cells and are associated with the immune system. One study looked at structural MRI and post-mortem examinations, and in this study, the in vivo studies showed that cannabis use is associated with a decrease in brain morphology and sight. And this occurred most in areas that had high, high levels of CB1 receptors and in patients who had history of mental illness. 
One in vitro study showed that resin has shown to be associated with a lower mitotic rate, but since the in vivo cells did not show mitotic inhibition, it's not completely confirmed. But high concentrations may interfere with development of embryos if the drug were to pass through the placenta. There hasn't been a lot of clinical research done on cannabis sativa due to its legal status as a Schedule I drug, but in one study done on multiple cirrhosis patients who re respond badly to antispasticity medication, smoked cannabis was shown to reduce that spasticity. And in another study, when cannabis sativa was given to patients that had chronic neuropathic pain, with not many treatments available, the cannabis sh was shown to relieve their pain and improve sleep and mood with adverse effects. Cannabis sativa addiction is really hard to define because some people say it's a physical process while some people say it's a psychological process. But dependence can be defined as three or more of the following symptoms. Tolerance, withdrawal symptoms, use exceeding initial intentions, reduced activities, or continued use despite problems. And substance abuse can be defined as one or more of the following symptoms interference with major obligations, intoxication in unsafe situations, legal problems, or continued use despite problems. Toxicity also varies depending on plant or the amount of plant or resin that's present. There have been no reported documents of marijuana overdose, but it, it's pretty well known that cannabis users often ingest other legal substances and mixed with sedatives or hypnotics could result in increased depressant effects. Like I mentioned before, marijuana is considered a Schedule 1 drug in the USA, which means it's an illicit substance with no known medical use. But some states have actually passed medical marijuana laws. And because of that, there's been a good amount of research and a few drugs marketed off of cannabis derivative or synthesized THC. Cannisol eye drops have been used in the Caribbean for glaucoma since around the late 1980s and it reduces intraocular eye effects with little to no including psychoactive side effects. Drabapinol, which goes under the trait name Marinol, has been shown to enhance appetite and reduce nausea and vomiting and also as a good treatment for spasticity in MS patients and disturbed behavior in Alzheimer's patients. It's also been shown to reduce the hair pulling tendencies of trichotillomania patients. Nabilone, which is also known as sesame, it has been shown to be a good treatment for nausea and vomiting during chemotherapy, and it's made from synthetic THC. The Big Smalls goes under the name Sativex, and it's the only non-synthetic THC cannabis inspired drug out on the market today. It's an oral mucosa spray and it's going under research for possible treatment for chronic pain right now, but it's been shown to be an effective treatment for spasticity. An important thing to note when using these cannabis inspired drugs is the importance of dosage because different individuals may consider different doses therapeutic or harmful. There's some criticism about these drugs, however, because herbal smoked cannabis has been shown to be a lot more effective and cheaper than synthetic THC drugs, but since it's mainly known for rec its recreational use, people tend to have a negative view of, the, of herbal smoked cannabis. Overall, it's been shown to be a good analgesic, muscle relaxant, and appetite stimulant. In conclusion, cannabis sativa is very unique and adaptable and has been used for centuries in many different cultures for many different uses. However, since it's considered an illegal substance in the USA, research and discoveries made about cannabis sativa have been limited. Despite this, it's been proven effective in treating glaucoma, spasticity, and nausea. Thanks.